there. Um, you know, he does have, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not sure if he actually cast it. I mean, I think he still probably gets casted. I don't think you want to just pass and do nothing this turn. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason, of course, I agree with you is because it's not going to get any better. Yeah, yeah, I mean, any card that Andrew draws at this point is probably going to be able to get cast. Um, he's going to have access to three man on his turn. His deck is pretty low end. The only card he can draw that he won't be able to cast is Jace um, or any of the reactive cards, obviously. Looks like Justin drew an Inquisition of Kozilek. Not a card he really wants to cast here, given that he knows what's in Andrew's hand. But nope, he is going to cast it. And is it going to hit? Yes, it is going to get. Oh, yeah, he knows about the other Deathrite Shaman. Yeah, he knows about the Deathrite Shaman. So he's going to get a Deathrite Shaman here. And again, Andrew just has a bunch of other lands in his hand. Anything sweet for Brown and Dude? Just going to play a Delta Sacrifice that. So we'll see what he wants to do to follow this up with. He knows the coast is clear, which is actually pretty interesting because I think he's got the death right that he wants to make sure he can cast this turn and then work his way towards, you know, casting that natural order, go get a progenitus and probably just win the game that way. Yeah, he doesn't have a third land, so he won't be able to cast it just yet. But you're right. Like, if he's able to just get a, a, a progenitus, um, this game should be over pretty quickly. Andrew does have Alice and Liliana in the Veil. Um, but he does not currently have one in his hand. Yeah, he better draw it, or he's not alive anymore. <laughs> That's typically how that works. Kind of interesting to see people uh, go back to Natural Order, honestly. Uh, haven't seen it for a little while. This was really popular, it feels like, a couple years ago. I think of Natural Order, I actually kind of think of Reed Duke. Yeah. With the Natural Order takes on Bant and other strategy that he tried uh, over time when he was playing Legacy on the Open Series and in Grand Prix to a lot of success. Um, not really sure what caused people to move away from it. Natural Order Progenitus is still really good. Well, I think in particular, uh, if, if you can kind of catch people by surprise, particularly now, like you said, um, people r r think of Natural Order with, in Elves, obviously, but mm -hmm. they don't really think of it in a deck like, in a, in a, in a shell like Bug. So if you're like end of your turn, sack at a Dryad Arbor, and turn four, you just cast Natural Order, you could just win some games, especially in these type of matchups. Mm -hmm. Here's the him now. Gonna fire that off. And this looks like it is gonna resolve. You see Tensham's hand, he's got three lands, and it looks like one mystery card over there. Looks like it, and I can't really make out what that card is. It's definitely a spell. He's got three lands. It looks, it looks like, like a fluster storm. storm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, might as well. You only have, uh, you're going to lose one card instead of two. Fluster storm has a, gets a copy for each spell in the stack, so it's effectively forces Justin to pay two mana to get that spell to resolve, which he does not have. And the only thing about that, you see Tenjum pick up a copy of Tree Nemesis, is, you know, by Flusterstorming there, you know, there's a chance that he ends up getting to hold Flusterstorm after the hymn is done, and then he'd be able to counter a natural order. Uh, yeah, but I think there's, so there's four cards in his hand, so there's 25% hit, chance to hit, and then a 33-5% chance, so I think you're actually, you're basically a third to get it out of your hand, so... I think given those odds, if you get it out of your hand, then you're basically losing two cards anyway. So I don't think it really matters. So now we're going to play a game of chicken because Justin actually drew the, the third land. And so now he's trying to figure out, okay, so how do I activate Deathrite Shaman for mana and make it so the attention isn't like, all right, take it away from you. That's what's happening right now. So if you're in this spot, what do you, what do you, is there some, is there some other posturing you can do? Do you wait or do you just do it right away? Or? I, I, I try, I hope that my opponent makes a mistake, but Tension will not do that yet. So... I, I, I still think you go for it because if, well, if he does it, fine. You just wait and you, you try to you hope to draw a land next turn. Sure, but you have to go for it. Yeah, you know? I'm just saying. Is there like a is there like a you know like some sort of you know body language you can do where it's like uh, activate the death I, shot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think if your voice goes up that high, <laughs> there's zero chance that it's not going to get countered. <laughs> Here's a little, oh no, the wow. Lilith Path. Well, actually, Brown has Force of Will plus, plus Force of Will. Okay, so we can counter that. All right, so that, that problem is taken care of. So should I, should I send my voice yeah. low? Uh, death Rite Shaman? Look, if you do it like yeah. that, I don't think... Uh, I will activate Death Rite Shaman. I'll, do, I'll just activate Death Rite Shaman. Well, no big deal, whatever. It's not a big deal. Let's see what the draw was. I think it was a Baleful Strix. All right, Baleful Strix. Try to get him another land here. Yeah. Let's see what this is. Not quite sure just yet. Again, Natural Order is the card there in Brown's hand. The other thing, too, you know, obviously his goal is to resolve Natural Order. It, it, he can't draw the Progenitus. That's not, that's no bueno. Yeah. That's not good. We can get a Crater Hood Behemoth, right? Get, get, a, get some beats. Yeah, great. <laughs> great. Charlotte's Age is really going to, or excuse me, Baleful Shrix is going to give the business. Well, the, the other thing is, is that Justin's at 13 now. With between Creeping Tar Pit and True Name Nemesis, if Andrew gets a little aggressive here, and he also has a Deathrite Shaman in play, 
he could potentially just put him in a position where for Genesis doesn't matter because you still have to attack with it twice. It's just as good. when it comes to play, you don't just win the game. You still have yeah. to attack with it twice. So yeah. um, it's potential. If Justin, if Andrew gets a little aggressive here and actually activates his creeping target, which it looks like he might, that's going to what drop Justin down to seven. That means that you know one. If he's able to get one Deathrite Shaman activation going, that's he's dead next turn. Yeah, the Deathrite Shaman that Brown has actually might be reserved for gaining life because there's a Deathrite to remove. Yeah, so I, I basically think Tenjim's not going to allow him to do that. If, he, if Tenjim has one way to... I don't think... Oh, Tenjim, he does have one tropical island, okay. and he has a flood of strength to find it. So as long as he just is, is patient and sequences everything correctly, I think uh, Andrew might be in good shape here. I mean, obviously, there's only one creature left in the graveyard, is there? Yeah, there's just a death right over there, and Tenjim is going to respond, we think. Because he he's being careful now, because he's trying to think of what's the worst thing that could happen. And he's actually going to let this go. Brown's going to go up to nine. Wow. Okay. I understand that. I understand why you'd want to do that. Because it doesn't matter, right? Like, okay, sure, you go up to nine. I'll put you back down to seven. Yeah, Fine. If, you, if, if you don't do anything, I can, yeah, I can yeah, drop you back down to seven. Yeah, I'll put you back down to seven. So what's it matter? He's going to go get an underground C. And yeah, while while Brown is tapped out right now with, with uh, Deathrite Shaman, Tenjim can remove a Spell Pierce or a Fluster Storm or something like that, and then put him back down to seven. So the fact that Brown gained life really doesn't matter. Yeah. So let's see here. Justin just has one card in his hand. It is in natural order. So if he just goes natural order, search for a progenitus, um, that's not I it. don't think that's good enough. Mm -mm. Yeah, Andrew can drop Justin down to three, and then he'll be dead in the following turn, even though he'll get one hit off progenitus. It's crazy. Yeah, so let's see here what Justin can draw. Um, some way to deal with the true name of he draws crater 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 beam is, so that is not ideal. I think this is a Charlotte suit. No, yeah, he's just going to do this, sacrifice that. This is the natural order. Go get Progenitus. Or does he have another target? Is there another bullet that is that? And there's like an Edric. Yeah, uh, um, yeah there's, there's, he can just go get that. The, the thing that he could go grab, and I, I can't believe I'm actually going to even say this, um, Ben Weinberg came up to me mm -hmm. while I was on my break yesterday, and he's like, hey, I'm playing this as a natural order target in my Elves deck, and he showed me a copy of Elder Scale Worm. Oh, uh, yeah. I, that's a thing. Which would be really good right now. So if you don't know Elder Scale Worm, it's, it has to revolve around which <laughs> Brown's life total is right now, which is seven. His life total would stay at seven, and he wouldn't actually die from the damage from these attacks. Deathrite would be able to work the life total down from the life loss perspective, but that's really it. You do see the Elder Scale Worm in the extinction of the hand. Uh, Andrew Tentum is going to win the match, but I guess this is, a, this is now a target for people <laughs> with natural order. Tentum actually drew a supreme verdict that turn, so I, I, he would have been a clue to the board. I think it's 